Welcome to this week's Q&A. We've got a very pertinent question from one of our viewers in Sydney this week, and his question is, will the Reserve Bank of Australia raise interest rates now? That is because the latest inflation data that has just been released for the March quarter came in higher than expected. Headline inflation came in at 1% for the quarter and 3.6% for the year, so year on year basis. And will this now cause the RBA to pivot in its course on interest rates? They've previously said that they were going to remain on hold for longer, basically saying as long as it takes, as they try and fight inflation and get that down to their 2 to 3% target band in a reasonable amount of time. So now that this data has come in and it's higher than the market was expecting, higher than the RBA was expecting, you know, what's going to happen? And, and as viewer said, look, I just want to know what am I going to do with my mortgage repayments and my property investment re loan repayments? The answer is that we'll really, I think, should have to wait and see what happens in the next quarter, so the June quarter, because if we look at the numbers, 3.6% year on year is higher than anticipated. However, this should be set in the right context. So in December of 2022, the quarterly number was 7.8%. And each quarter since then, it has decreased to the current 3.6%. So before we, um, I suppose, rush out and create havoc, I mean, some forecasters are now saying that the RBA will increase rates at the next meeting in, in May and or otherwise they're perhaps penciling in up to three further interest rate rises during the course of this year and in reality perhaps the RBA may sit back and be able to still remain on the sidelines and remain on hold until late in the year look at the figures that are coming forth and then, as other market commentators and economists predict, we may see an interest rate reduction either late this year or early in 2025. However, what these numbers have borne out is that certainly we can't take a rate increase off the table. In fact, the market is ascribing um, a 52% chance now uh, of an increase, and you know, only two weeks ago that was... Um, not even a wild possibility. So these things do move around quickly. What we do need to look at here is what's causing this sticky inflation to persist. And in the latest numbers, education was the greatest contributor by a long shot, 5.9%, uh, followed by health at 2.8%, housing at 0.7%, and then food and non-alcoholic beverages at 0.9%. So housing appears not to be a massive component. However, I think it is because over the year on an annual basis, it was actually 4.9%. And housing inflation in particular continues to pose a problem um, with, you know, the quarterly rise being driven mainly by rents up 2.1% and new dwellings purchased by owner occupiers, which was at 1.1%. What we have to look at is, though, I think, rental prices, and they rose 7.8% on an annual basis, the strong ri strongest rise since March 2009 from those quarterly figures, and rental price growth continues to reflect this low vacancy rate and a tight rental market being driven not only by immigration, but also by the fact that people who have investment properties are now paying higher interest rates on their loans associated with those assets and also thereby justifying an increase in the rentals that they are going to charge their tenants. So it's a bit of a vicious circle and as interest rates remain high, rents will continue to remain high, that will continue to contribute to uh, stickiness of this, this type of inflation. So I think really we need to take a step back and in my view, I think the RBA will most probably remain on hold and now for longer than I anticipated, perhaps till close to the end of the year. And I do believe at that point in time, we should see a reduction in the official cash rate. However, we do need to bear in mind that if these inflation numbers continue to surprise on the upside, that the RBA may be forced to increase its official cash rate 
and for all of our Australian expat clients what you really need to keep an eye on here is the impact that may have on the Australian currency. So the Aussie dollar over the last week I think had its best time for a long time rising 1.7 percent and that was in a response to the market feeling that the RBA may have to diverge its course, its pathway from say the Fed and other central banks and be forced to increase the official cash rate as opposed to the others that are looking to decrease theirs. Keep in mind there are some great benefits here and if you found this of interest please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click like and if you want any further information or insights that we may be able to share please don't hesitate to reach out, email us or call us and we'll have somebody contact you about your own personal set of circumstances. I'm Andrew Untervega and I'll see you at the next Q&A. Thank you.